So uh, Bernadine and Therese Stapleton, what is your number one writing tip for writers? Well, um, there's a reason that I'm sitting up in my bed right now because uh, <laughs> I actually have my computer on my little bed tray. I, I, I open my eyes and I write. I put it first in my day. That's what works for me. Mm -hmm. And I will show up uh, whether I feel I have anything to deliver or offer or not. So mm -hmm. sometimes I have struggled with where am I going to put the time? What? how will I sandwich it in? And so what I decided to do is I greet my day with it. Nice. And it does mean that I wake up a little earlier than maybe a lot of other people, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't mind that. It's a very, very special time when the world is waking up yeah. and yeah. it feels like it wakes up your soul in a very, in a very interesting way. Mm -hmm. And the day hasn't had a chance to wear you down yet. You know, if you're struggling yeah. with anything or yeah. you have chores to do, it's sort of like, in the early morning hours, there's an inhale. Mm -hmm. Everything is, everything is. <gasps> yeah. And that's when I get all my words out. Oh, I like that. That's great. I hope it works. <laughs> yeah, I hope it serves. Now, um, may you, can you please read, uh, just give us a little excerpt of your novel, Love Life. But before you read, um, Bernadine, could you let us know why you've chosen this particular section to read? Um, uh, okay, I'm going to read a little section for you that is about uh, one of my first days in Luca mm. and an exploration that I began because when I first arrived, I thought it was very auspicious that on a map, my name is Bernardine, and on a map, I found that there was a Piazza Bernardini. Yeah, yeah. I thought <laughs> I didn't know it's a very, very common brand name, and you know, I had no idea where it came from. I felt it was exclusively for me. So this is a section for when I first embark yeah. on my hunt. Okay. Stalking the Piazza Bernardini. I'm flushed with excitement, plump and sweating inside my yellow dress. I stole it from a theater costume bank, believing it would give me an air of intrigue. It's retro and sleeveless. Going sleeveless is a big step for me. I've spent years hating my upper arms. The dress is gauzy and long with swirls that look like pretty female faces. I wish I'd worn a slip because the back of the dress keeps crawling up my butt crack. I keep pulling it down in what I hope are surreptitious moves, but it probably looks exactly like what it is, picking my dress out of my butt. I know in my heart, that when I find my perfect Italian dress, I'll be able to walk everywhere without once having to pick at my butt. <laughs> also, it will not bunch around my waist like I'm pregnant. Neither will I sweat. I'm clutching a soggy map of the center of Luca. I've studied it inside and out, upside down, right side up. I've drawn the way to the Piazza Bernardini in blue pen, easy peasy. Standing on the corner of Paplina and Bortomachia is a short, handsome, very old man. He's older than poetry. He's weeping while gazing at a selection of ties on display in a designer store window. He rocks back and forth on his feet. His tears form rivers that run down the crevasses of his face. They cascade to the cobblestones beneath our feet, puddles of tears that the rest of us step over in annoyance. He's dressed to the nines and tens and elevens, Ralph Lauren from head on to toe. He's wearing a fedora with a red feather. His long white hair brushes his collar. He's wearing a pocket watch on a silver chain and checks it obsessively in between sobs. I stare at him for a long while before I take his picture. I also hope this is surreptitious, but it isn't. I move on, letting the sea of people carry me, meandering. Fellow yogis wave from a table on the sidewalk, holding containers of colorful gelato. I wave, but crest along, secure in knowing I simply have to follow the narrow cobblestone path directly to the Piazza Bernardini. What would it be like, this piazza? Most likely very charming. I envision a riotous garden with a cherub peeing daintily into an alabaster fountain. <laughs> Old ladies clad in black, smoking as they catcall the handsome young men in tight t-shirts and tighter black pants. Benches where Italian cats lays in the afternoon after torturing Italian mice. 
Uh, thank you. I can picture it so perfectly from, you know, pulling the dress out of the butt crack. <laughs> Like just it's so perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, the harder I tried to be elegant, the less elegant I was. I'm sure uh we women in sundresses can all relate to that. All um relate. and ultimately I think uh, I hope people will read the book and you will discover that I did find my piazza. Yeah. At the end. Yes, yes, yes. So I highly recommend Love Life. It is the perfect book for a giggle and just with a lot of important messages woven through as well. And what I will do, Bernadine, is I'll put links down below in the description box to your website and also to Breakwater's website so our viewers can purchase a copy of Love Life. Well, I wish you and all your viewers and fans the very best. And I hope that there's all kinds of love in your life. Thank you so much. And thank you for being such a fantastic guest. And I had a ball. Oh, I did too. Yes. And I'm sure the viewers did as well. And everyone, please come back next week. <laughs> thank you for watching.